Uh -huh. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a really nice and interesting topic uh, for our master class. Uh, the topic is from critical thinking to critical projects, asking, analyzing, reflecting, and evaluating. And uh, our speaker today and trainer is Ani Kojoyan from Armenia. She's an expert who combines engagement in varied causes and activities with a career of training, teaching, research, and writing. She's a Youth is Power NGO trainer and expert and holds the position of lecturer in language, gender, and communication studies at uh, Yerevan um, State University and leads a number of projects and initiatives to international in international and local governmental organizations. So, Ani, the floor is yours. Uh, feel free to introduce the topic for today, uh, which seems to be quite interesting and exciting for us. And uh, everyone, feel free to ask questions. We will follow the chat. And if you have anything, maybe, Ani, they can interrupt you and ask so that the conversation will okay. become more nice and yeah. dynamic. Thank you. The floor is yours. Totally, totally agree. Thank you, Dr. Jen, for your introduction and warm greeting. And hello, everyone, and welcome to this master class session from critical thinking to critical projects. Um, I just want to say um, that I'm really happy to, to be part of this event today. And I want to thank all the organizers of this event, first of all and all the participants for the patience and time and to and for joining us today. And um, just before we start, a few words, okay, that have already in, uh, introduced me, but a few words, uh, particularly for those who do not know me and uh, for those who, that we didn't have an opportunity to work yet together. So I'm, uh, I'm Annie and I'm an expert of education issues, education and general language and communication studies uh, with a wide range of activities of uh, teaching, training, coaching, mentoring, researching. And um, my passion is teaching, but at the same time, uh, it's also learning. And I also love watching but at the same time to listening to people, their views. And this is why it's really important to hear your voices, your opinions and your viewpoints. And if you have any kind of questions today, please you are welcome to interact and ask them. Uh, at the same time, we will have most probably question and answer session at the end of the master plan. So we'll have another chance to, to have this discussion. Um, so uh, just, um what I want to say else to say how I, probably I would like to start how I decided to have this topic and or how I have come to this topic. Actually, a few years ago when I was doing a number of trainings, um, I've suddenly understood that critical thinking is really crucial. So it's kind of like a phenomenon that we talk a lot, but at the same time, not always would apply critical thinking as a tool. Is it good or bad? I don't have an answer for this, but very often it's very crucial to, to apply critical thinking. Okay, sometimes we might, might skip, but if we skip, we need to do this consciously actually. So um, I was working on, um, on issues, gender and women's uh, rights, and this is a very sensitive topic, you know, and. I have decided that I need to apply it first of all myself, but at the same time, I need to develop my audience critical thinking at the same time to, because the topic is very sensitive. And if we do not apply critical thinking, uh, we're getting to lose something really important. Then suddenly there's two that it's not only a matter of a um, sensitive topic, but your any kind of project actually will benefit greatly uh, despite the topic and issue, um, if you apply critical thinking in it. So this is how I've decided to, to I have come to this topic and I've decided to uh, have this um, as a master class session for today. And another thing that I was wondering whether I need to have from critical thinking to project management, but I was like, hesitating whether I need to present from, from whose perspective, from 
project coordinators, project officers or project um, uh, managers perspective or from a branded perspective, a person who's writing a project proposal. So I said, okay, I will let me put critical project because both um, project managers and branches, potential branches, all of us would love to actually have critical projects. So we will benefit if we have it, right? Um, both actually. So this is what I've decided also to have from critical thinking to critical projects. Um, another thing is like, um, there are a number of actually uh, models that both, first of all, assess, evaluate your critical thinking level, but at the same time, they may also develop your critical thinking. However, naively, many uh, pe pe a lot of people, and also including professional community, also including my even my colleagues from university, many of them think that uh, critical thinking is kind of like inborn character. So either you have it or you don't have it. Either you are born with critical thinking or you are not. In fact, it's not like that we are not endowed with critical thinking. It does take time to develop critical thinking. It does take patience, passion, certain skills and knowledge, and lots of practice, practice, practice. So it's a matter of total practice. And today I'm going to also to present one of this basic model. This is where we need to start. And after it, if we're fine with basic model, later we can develop and uh, jump into other complex actually um, model. So your humor and questions are really welcome today. Grab also your either cup of water or coffee or wine. And let's try to start. Um, what we are getting to do, I have got presentation. I prepared PowerPoint presentation. Um, Hopefully you see it now, right? The first slide. Yeah, it and looks good. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting what I'm going to do. I'm going to present what critical thinking is, why critical thinking is important, where we can apply it, and when and how actually. I'm also I have included some project man man management um, points, but definitely I'm not going to talk about project management actually. It's much more on critical thinking of importance and how we can apply it into project management. Also, it's not directly connected with actually um, citizenship education or civic education, not necessarily, because it's kind of like a universal concept that you can apply regardless your topic, regardless your project, and in different steps actually of your project, and we'll discuss it today too. But at the same time, if we try to define broadly what civic education is, and in its broadest actually definition, we mean all the processes actually that affect um, people's beliefs, um, values, commitments, uh, capacities to become uh, responsible and prospective members of the community here, we need to confess that critical thinking is one of the most important, actually, tools, one of the most important um, characters that we need to develop uh, in order to fulfill citizenship education or civic education. So, but I would like to start, first of all, um, with the following question, uh, with discussion of the word critical and critical thinking. So let's start with the uh, with this very, very word, um, how we understand this. So the word critical is kind of like um, controversial um, word or term because it's not accepted equally. And depending on sociocultural background of the country you belong to or you come from, and depending even on your language, it may have different connotations. For example, in Armenian, critical when you say, first of all, it's associated with something really negative. First of all, people think that it's directly connected with the verb to criticize. So putting um, 
bad comments or opposing comments all the time. Um, but actually, uh, it's not like that. And if we try to figure out or define what the, uh, the adjective or word critical is, well, it has a number of meanings, of course, and it may mean expressing adverse or disapproving comments or judgments. But at the same time, it has other meanings, for example, expressing or um, involving an analysis of the merits and faults of the work. And as for critical thinking, so this was the, the word or the adjective critical. As for the word phrase or word combination, critical thinking, it has nothing to do with the verb to criticize. And it has nothing to do with the first meaning of the word critical. Rather, it's directly connected with its second meaning. And um, it's closely, even not, if not directly, it's closely connected with its uh, second meaning. And in fact, it is analyzing, it's um, analyzing the situation, problem, or issue, or an argument widely and broadly. And then drawing, after discussing it broadly and widely, then drawing into a conclusion or developing a judgment based on your analysis and evaluation of the situation of the problem. So, as I've already said, um, thinking in general is uh, kind of skilled work. It's not true that we are naturally endowed with the ability to think clearly, analytically, even logically, without learning how to think critically, logically, and analytically. And it's all a matter of practicing a lot. Um, as I've already said, very often people are also skeptical about critical thinking models. And they say, um, this is something like a concept or an abstract notion, how you are going to teach how to first assess and then how to develop it. But believe me, there are certain techniques and certain tools and models that will help us. And um, though being critical is really important and it should be an important part of our daily activity and practice at the same time and professional work, it's not really always easy, right? Particularly when you try to be critical, first of all, toward your own work and toward the work of others. However, if you are not critical, you can still become such by applying certain techniques and skills. Um, and this, the one, the model that I'm going to present is kind of like applicable, as I've already said, to any project and to regardless the topic and regardless the issue that you are examining. Now let's start and uh, let's continue um, with the structure and mechanism of critical thinking and try to let's discuss and understand um, its mechanism structure. So the aim of critical thinking is the so-called objective, objective analysis and evaluation of the situation, problem or issue in order to form judgment. It's, first of all, intellectual and cognitive process. It is an advanced thinking level, and it's a system of complex skills. And what I suggest uh, right now to do, it's try um, to try to classify or arrange things or, this or open these lines and try to um, explain in detail what we exactly mean by saying advanced thinking level. So first of all, as I've already said, it's an intellectual process. So it's something like a mental cognitive process where you start discovering and recognizing things. And when you start naming things, but at the same time, it's an advanced thinking level. In order to understand what I mean, let's try to remember um, what types of thinking we know or we remember. I'm not going to focus on, on this, but this is kind of like a reminder for us that we have all these thoughts, and the list is not complete, of course. You can't even add 
different types of thinking, but just a few of them. Let's name it analytical thinking, creative thinking, concrete thinking, abstract thinking, convergent and divergent thinking, sequential or linear, holistic or nonlinear, and finally critical thinking. By saying um, at best level, it means that we need to go through all probably of all this through all these types of thinkings of different layers of these thing, thinkings in order to come to critical thinking actually all these mentioned types of thinking actually they not always um these types work in harmony actually most of them uh they compete with each other or even they oppose each other for example concrete thinking vice abstract thinking, convergent, vice divergent. But whatever they do, I mean, these types of thinking, opposing categories, whether they compete or whether they oppose each other, um, whether they work in harmony, they lead to critical thinking. In other words, critical thinking doesn't oppose these types of thinking. Rather, it embraces all of them. And it's kind of like a combination of these types of thinking. So this is why we say it's a supreme form or it's a vast level. So basically you need to go through different types of thinking in order to come to critical thinking. Um, now about critical thinking skills. Um, as I said, it's um, intellectually disciplined process of actively and um, skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, most importantly, synthesizing and evaluating any kind of information gathered from or generated by observation, our own experience, experiences of others, reflection, reasoning, and communication. So critical thinking, as I've already mentioned in the previous slide, is a system of complex skills. And as such, it presupposes, first of all, formulating questions. But what kind of questions? Formulating relevant and reasonable questions. Observing and finding out the information source and target, that is to say, pointing out who's the provider of the information, what is its purpose, the purpose of providing that information. Then analyzing and evaluating different viewpoints, opinions, and arguments. Once analyzing, the next step is differentiating, which is an opinion and which is an argument. And based on all these steps, finally, forming our own judgment and making our own conclusions or even creating new content or even alternatives. So if we try to actually um, sum up the skills, it, we can say that critical thinking presupposes observation, analysis, interpretation, reflection, evaluation, explanation, problem solving, decision making. But at the same time, it seems, okay, we know what to do, we need to observe, we need to analyze, we need to interpret, we need to reflect, evaluate, etc. And we will have critical thinking. It seems to be easy, but it's not. Why? Because um, there are a number of obstacles, actually, that hinder critical thinking. And I've decided just to present a few of them. And again, the list actually is not complete. Okay, so you can add, you can even argue. But I've decided to include, first of all, stereotypes and social norms and traditions. Very often, we take stereotypes, social norms and traditions, and certain practices developed or established by them. We take them for granted. We just say it's like that because it's a tradition and that's it. And it hinders actually critical thinking. But at the same time, ironically, critical thinking is the tool that will help us to break 
certain negative stereotypes. At least it should. Another thing that I've mentioned as obstacles, social institutions, and just naming a few, uh, a few of them, let's say media that circulates and normalizes and standardizes against stereotypes. It again hinders um, critical thinking or even education as a social institution, right? Actually, it's again, ironically, institution is a platform that needs to develop critical thinking, but we have certain educational processes and among them, for example, many assessment methods that really hinder critical thinking. For example, very often we put high marks those students who really remember by heart every single statistics, names, numbers. But we very often in this flow of teaching information all the time, we forget to teach how to learn. And this process actually again hinders critical thinking. Another thing is, you are probably wonder to why I've decided to put partnership and experience, but I will explain. It's partnership and experience that can also hinder our critical thinking while managing any kind of like some project. For example, let's say you got a project proposal from your partner, who is your strategical partner, a partner for years, you know them you really trust them but this project proposal is not good enough and here sometimes this partnership friendship can really hinder your critical thinking you can put it just aside say well you know we are partners let me give them another chance is it bad not always not always but you need to again apply critical thinking um, in favor of both of you for, for the sake of having critical pro projects and uh, for you as a project manager and for your potential grantee actually. So critical thinking doesn't necessarily mean actually that you need to criticize your partners and projects, but it can serve as kind of like a tool again to negotiate and communicate with your partner to improve projects. Another thing I've also put experience. So let's say you have had good or bad experience with certain partner uh, organization, but you received, um, let's say, kind of like a project and you rely on your experience and you, and you don't apply critical thinking and you say, I have this experience with them, it will not work or vice versa. Uh, we have worked for years. I don't care, let's say, what kind of project they brought to me. So I rely on my experience. So experience sometimes can hinder our critical thinking. Another thing um, that can hinder is, of course, emotions. Very often, we don't want to apply critical thinking. And again, we rely on or trust our emotions. And of course, it's also intuition. We don't know how, we can't name it, but at the same time, um, we feel it and we don't apply critical thinking. We just say, we just, this is how I feel. And this is the game where um, hindrance of critical thinking comes. Uh, but of course, as I've told you, there are models that will help us to overcome all these mentioned points and even much more. Um, now, what I suggest, let's continue with um, project management cycle or life cycle and try to remember uh, what actually um, phases it consists of and how we can apply critical thinking in its context. So managing projects includes fulfilling goals in an uncertain, very often environment. And due to the uncertainty and often complex tasks and project management is a real challenge, we all know. And some projects may fail. And critical thinking is kind of like a key in terms of 
planning for project success. If you are a project coordinator, let's say, and you review a piece of project proposal, you may want to decide whether to approve it or not. And here, you need to use this critical thinking. And once approved, you do not stop there. You will need to find critical thinking in its interim and final evaluation phases as well, or even while dealing with your expert company who is going to challenge you all the time as a project uh, manager. Um, we're not, as I've already told you, not going to talk specifically about project management today, but rather present it kind of like conceptually as a process consisting of the following activities, planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. So project management consists of macro level and micro level, and critical thinking can be, should be, and shall be actually included and applied in all possible levels. As for macro level, here I mean, for example, need assessment of the group of organizations that have applied for a grant, let's say, resource assessment, feedback, project midterm and final evaluation, knowledge and attitude assessment and progress assessment. And for each step listed here, and for each section within each step, we can apply this critical thinking. Um, can I ask a question, to... Anijan? Sure, sure, Dr. So uh, I wonder if this is a skill for the project manager who is applying all this critical thinking results, let's say, to the project cycle, rather than it is something related to the process itself. Both. It doesn't, it doesn't have any borders. Once I introduce you, for example, you will totally understand what I mean. So you can have critical thinking as a tool and on the one hand, let's say we have a project manager who is there to review your project proposal as a grantee. And on the other side, we have you as a potential grantee who is writing project proposal. Both of you can apply critical thinking as a tool with certain techniques and with certain phases or steps that we're, I'm going to present. And both of you actually will benefit whether you are going to use equally the same steps i am not sure because the steps are not the one that i'm going to present they are not fixed there so they can alter you can you can go forward and you can go back again and again go forward to check whether you did this or that but for example as a let's say granting as for your project manager we don't know which steps he or she is going to apply and when actually. Thank you. So, um, as for project cycle, there are different, different models, right? Um, I just decided to present only a few of them, but I've already, as I've already told you, um, whatever management cycles or models we have, basically all on any kind of projects that we're doing, let's say this master class, let's say, I don't know, discussions, trainings, even research products, they all consist of planning, implementation, monitoring, evaluation, and probably, of course, closing um, our project. Um, this is actually another, right? This is another um, scheme or sketch a project life cycle that you can see. Why I'm presenting? Because once I introduce the model of critical thinking, you can, can come back here and you can try yourself later how you can apply that tool in different steps. In let's say project problem identification step, you can apply, apply all the steps of critical thinking in project formulation and preparation in implementation and in monitoring, actually. Um, now let's talk a little bit about micro level. By micro level, um, what I mean here basically is kind of like 
um, we take one step and we can divide it into sections, right? So critical thinking is also applicable you know, at micro level. And that's to say at each phase of project management within each section. So for example, when you review as a project manager or as a grantee, when you write down your project goal and objectives, deliverables, outcomes, project implementation team when you review who is going to implement the project or as a grantee you compile your team actually target group with whom you are going actually to work timeline um, then budget risk risk assessment and mitigation plan activities and factual activities knowledge an attitude assessment and progress assessment of your target group, let's say through pre-test and pre-training or post-training tests, recommending, recommending changes. And when you do your SWOT analysis, then, in order to move forward from why uh, it was important or it's important to apply critical thinking, now I suggest to move into how critical thinking can be applied uh, let's consider it, as I've already told you, one of the very, very basic models. It's my favorite one, actually, which has been developed by Leeds University. And I have also included a link to that course by Leeds University. So if you want to later improve your skills, uh, you, you will have access to that course and you can improve it like later yourself. So this is actually critical thinking evaluation model and also development model. What I mean here is, um, first of all, it gives you a chance to evaluate and then to develop. It basically consists of three steps where it's also called levels, three levels, or even it's called phases. So, but I decided to put it, have it here like step, step one, which is a step of description when you describe the issue. Step two, the step of analysis. And step three, the step of evaluation. So actually, I'm not going to present you something really new. What I'm going to do to help you with this model to name certain things that you have been doing with certain names. And if you have been doing it intuitively, Let's already, uh, what I'm suggesting, what I'm inviting to do, let's have it, uh, let's do it already consciously. And once we do it consciously, we systematize actually, and we always then have a chance whether I want to apply critical thinking or not, because it's always the model is there, the formula is there in front of your eyes, and it's, it becomes just a matter of a choice whether to apply it or not, and not a matter of intuition. So the first step or the first phase, as I've already said, it's a step of description. Here you describe things, issue, problem, any kind of project. If we go back, let's say any kind of a project section you can take and you can go through this phase, phase of description, which presupposes certain question. Actually, each step presupposes certain questions. So the first step, or step one, presupposes the following questions. Who, what, where, and when? What does this phase do? The phase and its questions allow us to get very normative, denotative, descriptive, informative view of the situation or of the project or of an issue. For example, while writing our project proposals or any project related materials. So we need very quickly to ask the question, who wrote this, what, where, and when? These kind of questions are really important to start and but they provide very, as I've already said, denotative or descriptive answers and information. And they convey the message, what is said, who said, when and where. But we need, it's not enough, of course, and we need to move forward. The second step is 
the step of analysis where you analyze the situation, the problem, or the project, or any section of the project. The questions for the steps are why, let's say, why it is written like this, or why I should consider it as important, depending on how you want to formulate. But the most important thing is the key word, the question, which starts with why, how, where, what will, or what would is. So what these questions do, these questions allow us to study and observe methods, reasons, results, and suggest alternatives. So if you are reviewing a project proposal, let's say, you will have lots as a project coordinator, officer, or manager, you will have lots of comments how to improve, actually. Or you want to do your SWOT analysis here, or you analyze methods, whether they are going to be effective, productive, or not. So this is the very, very step, actually, that you need to apply there. And finally, the last step, which is the step of evaluation, evaluate when you evaluate, once you analyze arguments and facts, once you differentiate what is an argument and what is a fact and what is an opinion in your project, then you can uh, form your own, actually, uh, judgment and drive your own conclusions. And the questions here that you come to answer are, so what? Or what is next? This phase allows to make um, a judgment and evaluate the situation, its objectivity, importance to measuring facts and arguments around, and make a conclusion, suggestions, and find a solutions. For example, whether to approve the project, let's say, or not. The most important thing here is uh, that we need to remember that this model and the steps of this model they are changeable. What does it mean? You do not necessarily go from step one, then step two, then step three. Well, it sounds logical. You may start with step one, then you can go to step two, then you suddenly understand that you missed something and you need again to go back to step one. Or you may start even with your, let's say, judgment or evaluation. But then you want to again classify, go to step one, step two, again step three, in order to validate whether your evaluation was true or not. So what I want to say is that these steps are not fixed. They are changeable and you can change as much, go back and forward as you think, whether when you manage a project or when you or whether when you create a project yourself as much as possible or as much as you need. And I've decided just very briefly to present, let's say, this sample of project management when we write down, let's say, a review memo report. So here we may have these sections again, organization name, project proposal title. Starting with this, okay, we can, you cannot, of course, change the name. But starting with the second line, project proposal title, you can apply actually this critical thinking model, three steps, description, okay, what is written, analyze, let's say, whether it gives the true authentic nature of the whole project, and make, let's say, evaluate the title, whether it really sounds good and authentic, or you need even to change. Duration, again, you come to the duration or timeline, you think, okay, I need to try again to go through these three steps again and to see whether the duration of the, uh, of the project is effective and reasonable or not. And again, you can apply this CT, critical thinking model, for all this mission, let's say, lines, project summary, goal, objectives, deliverables, and the others, of course. And I've also prepared shortly a quiz. Um, very often I use this kind of quiz, but 
every time, of course, I contextualize them depending on what material I present and what I want to assess. So it's kind of quiz uh, that gives you an opportunity to self-assess your critical thinking level yourself. So I'm not going to assess and evaluate, but you are going to assess and evaluate your own critical thinking in the context of critical projects. It has 15 questions. For each question, you have three possible answers. Always, never, sometime. So for each question, you can choose one of them. It are always, never, sometimes. So it's going to check and evaluate your critical thinking both as a potential project, either manager, coordinator, or officer, or and project proposal writer or a potential grant team. So if you are ready, let's start. You can make some notes um, in, in a on a paper or in your computer actually. Um, the first question is, so I also prepared it as a handout. So at the end of the master class session, you will have it, that have it will send it to you as a handout. So you can widely use it later if you skip something or you can even um, try it with your colleagues because, well, this is kind of like right now what we're doing, we are self, you are self-evaluating your critical thinking level, but you can also evaluate your colleagues' critical level actually. So it's very nice actually, quiz which is adoptable and applicable in different situations. So the I was first going question, to ask that question and if we can do it in a team. So yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can definitely. So the first question is, as a project manager or project coordinator officer, I look. So here you need to choose. I always look. I never look. I sometimes look. So the key is here to be very quick and at the same time, very, very sincere because you are going to self-assess yourself, right? I look for evidence before believing any claims, opinions, or messages stated or written in a project proposal, or if it's not already a project proposal, it's approved project, then in its project midterm or even final report. Second question is, I consider issues discussed in a project proposal, or again, if it's already approved project, it's project midterm or final report from a different perspectives, even if they are expressed by a reliable partner. Let's say this is a partner for years, this is your strategic partner, but still are you you consider issues discussed there from different perspectives or you just believe because it's a reliable partner. I feel confident to present my own arguments even when it challenges the views of my organization's management or partners. Let's say you review the proposal and you have some arguments, but probably your management, organization management stop the head might be not okay with your arguments. But because you are sure these are arguments, facts, which means, and not just opinion or your viewpoint, you really feel confident to present. So is it always like that? Or sometimes? Or you never feel confident? The next question for, I actively seek evidence while providing any information in my project proposal as a grantee. Now let's change the roles. Let's think that you are grant right now who is writing a project proposal. You are writing down, let's say you are describing, you are providing background, you are describing the problem. Do you really actively seek evidence and also even references while providing any information? Even when it seems that seems to you that you already know it. My opinions either project manager or potential grantee are influenced by evidence rather than just 
personal experiences and emotions on the issue that I'm reviewing or presenting in the project proposal. This is kind of like issue as um, both as project coordinator and sometimes even as a grantee, I experience really myself. When I read the project proposal, I know this person seems to be right, but actually it's not evidence. It's based on his or her own, let's say, experience, feelings. But here, is it always actually enough or not? And in this case, as my role as a project manager, let's say, whether um, I'm influenced by this evidence or just by my personal experience because I trust this partner say, okay, I know what I'm doing. Number six, if I am not sure about something stated in a project or which I state in a project as a grantee, I will research to find out more before evaluating the project or as a grantee before finalizing. Or I would say, okay, this is that heavy. She knows me for sure. I don't need all the time to do some research and to find out more information on this because she knows me. This is the case or I always really research to find out much more before just finalizing it. Number seven, I know how to search for reliable information to develop my knowledge of a topic. So it's kind of like logical continuation of question six. Um, if I always research or sometimes research, but another question is, do I really know how to research for reliable information? So it's like kind of media literacy issue even. I can recognize false and inaccurate information provided in the project proposal or even midterm final reports. So there is some kind of information and I recognize. Not simply I feel it's not true, but I really recognize it as an inaccurate information. I can identify the different purposes of information sources and I know how to find information for use in various assignments. So it's not only about reliable information, it's for different purposes, finding information for different purposes as well. Number 11, I know how to use various searching engines and, plat engines and platforms for fact checking of any information related to the project. I know how to evaluate information for use in an assignment. So it's not only a badge for finding out information, but it's also evaluating information for use in assignments. Number 13, I feel confident pointing out potential weaknesses in the project or work or claims and opinions in the project. Let's say I did my SWOT analysis and I really know this is a weak point and this is a race, but I also know how to mitigate it properly as a project manager. So I really feel confident, first of all, to point out these potential weaknesses and probably later to, to give some suggestions on how to improve it. Number 14, I'm confident in applying my knowledge in different contexts. 15, I am willing to change my mind about something when presented with compelling evidence. Let's say, I know this is this, but then suddenly I get some feedback from a colleague, from a management, from a grantee, from a partner, and I'm ready to change my mind about it because the presented opinion or evidence, uh, it was compelling evidence actually. So these are 15 questions. Now please calculate um, and how many alwayses you have, and times you have, and never you have. And we will have results uh, for you here. So, um, did you manage to calculate very quickly? Or you need some 10 seconds, 15 seconds for that? Okay. If you have always as an answer for 12 
or 15 times, then it means you have an advanced level of critical thinking. What does this mean? This means you are confident almost always at finding and evaluating information and applying that information either during preparing a project proposal or while reviewing a project proposal. You actively seek evidence to inform and shape your thinking rather just relying on your personal experience or experience of your partners or friends and are willing to challenge yourself and challenge others as well. But there is always room for improvement. Train your skills. How? If you have this advanced level of critical thinking, my advice is to have this model in front of your eyes as a tool and a formula, but also seek for other complex models. If you have never as an answer for seven or two, 15 times, then you have low level of critical thinking, but no worry, there is always like a chance to improve it. But this means that you lack confidence and skills of applying critical thinking while reviewing and reflecting on the project information in evaluation, as well as in your daily even practice overall. This gap is often filled how if you don't have evidence, you fill it with emotions and personal assumptions without any proper judgment and observation. Next time, try to use some of the presented critical thinking model questions while writing yourself a project proposal or while reviewing a project material or proposal, starting and actively using uh, the descriptive phase and moving forward. And finally, if you have some times for 19 to 15 times, then you have an average level of critical thinking. This means you have some skills of critical thinking. However, they are part of your skills based on and developed through your previous experiences. But the skills are not well structured or, or arranged and are very often used intuitively and can be misleading. Intuitively and not consciously, actually. This is where we were kind of like fighting, right? You do not believe every single piece, whatever is stated on a project material, which is good, but not always you seek for extra information for fact-checking, differentiating between the sources of information, evaluating the situation or differentiating between what is an argument and what is an opinion. Try to organize and structure your critical thinking skills. Use it consciously rather than intuitively. Use the analytical phase of the presented model, descriptive and analytical phase. Also, I have prepared kind of like two questions to take with you from the semester class and to think later while digesting this information. Um, questions to think over whatever you have already done and how you are going to plan your further activities. Is the critical thinking model you have ever applied in any of your projects? And this one, the one that I presented today during this session, are they similar to each other or they are different? And if they are different, how they are different and where they are different? Or if you have applied it, but without naming it as critical thinking, rather relying on it intuitively, try to figure out things where you felt while doing it intuitively rather than consciously. So um, I have also prepared, as I've already told you, useful links. Four links that can be really actually useful for you for improving it like further if you want to practice critical thinking and learn about it much more in detail. So the first one is critical thinking course that um, the model that I took and presented today, it was based on, on the model developed by Leeds University. So you can find the full course um, access through this link. Then five simple strategies to sharpen your critical thinking. These are BBC ideas. And again, you can find the link here. Five tips 
to improve your critical thinking, uh, which is TED Talk. I actually love TED Talks. Um, most of them are really useful. And another is, and all of them are like the second and the third one, they are five minute uh, actually um, videos. The fourth one, it's a little bit long, I guess 45 minutes or about an hour. It's kind of a webinar um, to critical thinking and already problem solving, which is uh, by University of Minnesota. You can also find the link there. So actually, this was a whole that I've decided to prepare for you. Thank you. And I really hope that it was kind of like mm, useful and tool and you do not that you haven't wasted your time while joining this session and it gave you some kind of like room to think later and review later probably um, your previous experiences and practices that you have uh, applied in your project management whether a project officer manager or a grantee so thank you. That's all. And we actually fit uh, within mm -hmm. the time, I believe. Thank you, Anujan. There is one uh, comment from Ara in the chat. So he says that some questions cannot be answered by the three options suggested if you apply critical thinking approach. So if you want I to, know, to comment, please. Yeah, I know. Pro I probably know what Ara wants to say. So um, if you show this more quiz, and three answers to sociologists, probably they would say it will be good actually to have probably um, not only three uh, possible answers, like um, always, never, sometimes, but some other probably, you know, questions between. But actually, this is very, uh, it, because it gives kind of like every, so it's, it doesn't say if you have seven always, then your answer is this. It says from seven to let's say twelve. So this is where the compensation of the quiz is. If I got the the question correct. I hope so. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Otherwise, we can finish with a. Great, uh, thank you to Annie and everyone thank who participated. Thank you. And on that, John, we have also like question whether, yes, you will get, of course, PowerPoint yes. presentation. We're going to post will... an article on our website about this event with the attached uh, materials and the video link, uh, which will be uploaded in our YouTube channel. Okay, um, you also have this um, handouts or like yes. five basic tips, how to improve critical thinking, and also the quiz actually in terms mm -hmm. of PDF that you can circulate among your colleagues and check also their critical thinking problem level. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you everyone. Yeah. See ya, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.